help me welcome our own Pastor Green. Amen to the pulpit. Amen. Glory be to God. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. First thing I'm going to do is set this stopwatch here so I can be obedient. Amen. I want to be obedient. That means 15 minutes. Amen. Because you know how us preachers are. Amen. We want to talk. Amen. We love to talk. Amen. You've been places and stuff and heard preachers, so don't act like you don't know up in here. Amen. First off, I'm giving honor to Jesus Christ, whom is the head of my life. I want to thank him for the opportunity to be standing here this evening. Without him, I would be nothing. Amen. I'm, I'm thanking my wonderful prophet, the overseer, the overseer of the many churches that we have around the United States and abroad, amen. That's why this is an international church, because the vision of our prophet, amen. amen. It wasn't just a local church. We didn't say uh, 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 liberty of Laurel. We said liberty international because we are worldwide, amen. And his wife, uh, Pastor Calissa, amen. Matter of fact, she's the pastor in Delaware right now at, at, at the church that we just opened up in Delaware, uh, the first of the year. We've been over there for a few months, but she's been the pastor there, and, and he's the overseer here. Amen. So we just praising God for that. We thank you for that opportunity, to Prophet, to be standing here. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for the opportunity to be standing here. Father, we want to thank you this evening for just being who you are, Father. We're not asking you for anything this evening, Father, but to let me just disappear, God, and it be all about you and none about me as this message is received, deceived. Amen. 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 This evening, this evening we're, we're, we're ordaining ministers. Amen. We're ordaining ministers and, and pastors here and stuff. And I want to I want to explain to you all what a minister is, amen. You see, because sometimes people get ministry confused. You see, ministry ain't just preaching, amen. Now, ministry ain't just teaching, you see. I heard Sister Kay say it earlier. She said that uh, we have some ministers in the house right now, amen, that's just not accepting your calling, amen. You see, you may have something that you do that God is calling you to do, but you're not accepting your calling, amen. You see, you might like to dance. Uh, you might like to help someone that's been to prison. Uh, or you might like to help someone cook. Uh, you see, that's a ministry. You see, in the earthly, they call it business and uh, opportunities or whatever you call it. Uh, you would see when you're in Christ, uh, we call it ministries. You see, because we're giving glory to God and we're serving him as he came and served us. Uh, he said he came here not to, to, to be served, but to serve and that's what we supposed to do and that's what ministries is all about amen that's what ministry is all about i just wanted to make sure that we understand that's what ministries is and you can run, but you can't hide. And I'm a testimony to see about that, amen. That you can run, and that you, but you can't hide. You see, when you got a calling on your life, uh, you see, God is going to make you accept that calling. Uh, you see, many are calling, few are chosen. Uh, and I'm glad to see that I'm chosen. Uh, and I'm glad to see that I accept my calling. Uh, I want you to see me to examine yourself uh, to make sure that uh, you're not a minister that's sitting out there that's going through torture, that's going through something uh, because you're not accepting your calling uh, because you're running uh, because you ain't ready. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, you're never going to be ready. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, you are ready. Uh, you're ready right now. You see, you want your right way at. He wants you right where you're at. He wants you right where you're at. He wants you right where you're at. Quit trying to be ready because you're not going to be ready. Those that's in the church ain't ready. Come on now. That was my problem. You see, my problem is I was looking at man and I wasn't looking at God. And when I stopped looking at man and start focusing on the prize and the sky, I realized that I'm going to never be ready. I think about David. I think about David, the man that God said was a man after his own heart. He didn't say it was a man after his own heart by all the things that he done wrong. 
So he was a man after his own heart because he was able to realize that he had done wrong and he said, God, forgive me. Oh, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to quit pretending. That's why people don't come to church now, ministers. Because we're pretending that we're holier than thou. That we are better than them. Because we don't do this no more. We don't do that no more. Amen. We just keeping this real, y'all. That's what this gospel needs. You see, you see, you see, you see, my niece that was dancing, she called me and asked me, she said, what's your favorite song, Uncle? And I told her, I says, uh, this, 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 this Jenkins guy sang this song, this means war. Because we're having a spiritual warfare. And if you don't recognize it, you're blind. All the things that's going on around you is spiritual warfare. Oh God, God, God. You see, they're fighting in Iraq and they're fighting in all these other countries, and the Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars and all those things going on, and we still ain't paying attention. Hello. They're in a war, but we're in a spiritual war. Where the devil is trying to destroy our families. Uh, he got men sleeping with men. Uh, or women sleeping with women. Y'all act like you don't hear me this evening. Spiritual warfare. Yeah, to destroy our families. So as ministers. As ministers we got to go out. And the, the, the ministers that. That, that, that's been called to, to, to preach his word. Uh, the ministers that's been called to teach his word. Uh, we got to go out and we got to teach the true gospel. Amen. Amen. You see, you got to go out there and teach what God said. Not what Reverend Green said uh, or what Pastor Tony said. But what God said. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. This, this is an ordination. I'm going to give you a scripture. I'm going to give you a message here. I've got eight minutes. And I'm going to bring this home for you real quick. But i got something good for you here. Because I'm going to show you something that you're going to appreciate. You're going to appreciate this really. Because this, this, this is the, this is the, 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 the perfect example of what God can do. Amen. Uh, if we are open your Bibles right quick to the ninth chapter of Acts. Okay, I'm not going to read it all to you because I only got a few minutes up here, but I want to explain this all to you right quick. Go to the ninth chapter of Acts. You see, in the ninth chapter of Acts, you got a man named Saul. In the ninth chapter of Acts, you got a man named Saul, okay? A man named Saul in the ninth chapter of Acts. In the ninth chapter of Acts, it started out with Paul. He was going out to... Uh, destroy and kill and persecute Christians. He had an order. He had a he had a letter from Mayor Bowser. An ordination saying that he could go out and just persecute Christians, bind them up and bring them in if they're calling on the name of Jesus. But you see, Paul was on his way to Damascus and it tell me that bright light blinded Paul. And when that bright light blinded Paul, it put Paul in the darkness. You see, Paul couldn't see no more. It put him into that darkness. Oh, Lord, you ain't like you don't hear me for the scene. You see, Paul was in darkness because... Jesus had intervened in, 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 in what was going on. And you see, even though Paul, even though Paul was persecuting Christians, even though Paul supposedly didn't know Christians, even though Paul supposedly didn't like Christians, the Bible tells me that when Paul had his encounter with Jesus, it said Saul, he said Saul, he said it twice, and Paul recognized him, he recognized who it was, he said, Lord, is that you? Come on now. So regardless of what he had done wrong, regardless of how wrong he was, regardless of how much wrong was in him, he still recognized the Lord. And you know what he said? 
Lord, what will you have me to do? That's what I want to know this evening. Lord, what will you have me to do? You see, Paul was smart enough to recognize that he had had an encounter with Jesus. And in that recognizing that, he wanted to know, what would you have me to do? He had forgot about his real mission, which was to kill and destroy. Now he wanted to save. I can feel it turning around. Amen. Because he had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. So, 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 I don't have a, a, a title here for this, for this right now. It's if it would be, it would be chosen by God. Chosen by God. Chosen by God. And the reason I picked chosen by God, because what happened was, after Paul got blinded, after Paul got blinded, he told, Jesus told him, he said, just go into the city and wait. I'm going to send someone there for you. He was in a vision. He said, I'm going to send someone there for you. Name Ananias. And he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna tell you what's going on. And, 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 and the Bible tells me that uh, 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 Paul was sitting there. And, and Ananias, uh, Ananias came in. And, 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 and Paul now, he knew who he was. And Anias knew who he was. Anias called him brother. Brother. Keep in mind now. Keep in mind now. Keep in mind now. A sinner. A sinner. It was only three days. It was only three days now. It was only three days since the encounter with Jesus. And now here Anias was calling Paul brother. Because see, when you have an encounter with Jesus, your whole life change. When you have an encounter with Jesus, he take away those things you used to do. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you're not the man you used to be. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you're not the woman you used to be no more. Hallelujah. Quit listening to what people say. They're going to hold it against you anyway. But you see, Jesus say, when you come to God, he remember your sins no more. You a new man, a new creature in Christ. You see, you're holding yourself hostage because of something you done five years ago. And now here it is, a, a man that had killed all God's people in route to kill and buy some more. Three days later, being called brother. Because of what we're living under right now. Grace. Amen. Quit holding on to things to keep us in bondage. Amen. We're holding on to things to keep us in bondage. And that's the, that's the attack of the enemy. That's the attack of the enemy. I just told you we're in spiritual warfare. So he's utilizing the things that he can to get to our minds. He utilizes the thing that he can to destroy us, uh, and we allow him to do it. We're conforming to the world instead of transforming. We're renewing of our mind. It's time for us to wake up and uh, accept our calling. Paul had been, I want y'all to write these three things down for me before I go. I got four minutes. I want you to write these down. I want y'all to write this down and I want y'all to research it for me. Seriously. Because this is important. This is important that we know this. Quit holding yourself hostage. Quit having people not come into church because of something that you're holding against them because you don't do this no more. And you don't do that no more. And I'm this and I'm that. We're driving people from God's kingdom. He tells us in Luke 14, 23 to go out to the highways and the hedges and compel his people to come in that his house may be filled. Hallelujah. Not to run them away from his house because of our superiority because now we are in Christ and we're this and we're that. Amen. Y'all write these things. Write this down for me. I'm getting ready to sit down. You know, we're going to teach you. Let me teach you for about three minutes. Let me do a little teaching here for about three minutes. 
The name of this is chosen by God. Chosen by God. Okay? Now, Paul had an encounter with God on his way to Damascus. So Paul was in the presence of God. So right down presence of God. You see, when you come in the presence of God, we expecting some kind of change. Amen. Now. When you come into the presence of God, we expecting some kind of change in your life. Amen. You know, I I I I, I get bothered. I was in, in Rhode Island and I heard uh, I heard a preacher speaking and, and 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 he was talking and he was saying that uh, I don't want I don't want none of those uh, 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 sugar, sugar, oh, diabetes. I don't want none of those diabetes in my choir. And I was like, because it went over my head because I don't think like that. You see, because if you're on the outside and you're coming into Christ, you see, you're looking for the same thing that I'm looking for. It's not my place to judge who you are. It's not my place to judge how you walk. It's not my place to judge who you're with. It's none of my place to do that. Only thing I can do is give you what the word of God says. I'm not judging no man, but I'm going to tell you what the word says. Amen. Because once you come in the presence of God, you are a new creature. Amen. If you do like Paul did and said, Lord, what will you have me to do? I surrender to you. Amen. So we got presence of God, okay? And then after you get, after you deal with the presence of God, you're going to realize and appreciate once the Holy Spirit come upon you, you're going to appreciate the power of God. Amen. You're going to appreciate the power of God and you're going to see what that power can do. Amen. That power of God is mighty. Amen. That power of God, the same power that spoke this world into existence from nothing. Amen. That same power that created something from nothing. Amen. You got to have something in in order to make something. But when you God, you see God can do things that no other man can do. Amen. So we're talking about power. Amen. We're talking about power. So you got the presence of God and, and you got the power of God. Amen. And the last one that I want you to write down for me before I sit down is proof of God. That proof is your life. Proving of God. Proving of God. So in other words, when I see you, I don't need you to tell me that you're a Christian. I don't need you to tell me that you're holier than thou. I don't need you to tell me that you go to an international church and, and you're a pastor. Are you this and you that? I need you to live that life so that light that you shine in can beam out, Brother G. Day, and I can see it in you everywhere you go. And then God get the glory. You see, before I sit down and look at this scripture, you see right down here, when Paul, when Paul went out and started to speak, you see Paul had been had been a uh, uh, persecuted the Christians, right? And, and straightway he he and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him was amazed. Now I'm getting ready to bring this in for you. They was amazed because of what he used to be. Okay, they was amazed because of what he used to be. But see, God wanted Paul for what he used to be because he needed a man that had some iron in his spine. He needed a man that was willing to stand up. He needed a man that was bold enough. He knew who he was chosen. He knew he was chosen. Amen. He didn't want no weak man. He knew who he wanted. He old man, if he that strong, I need him. Hallelujah. And that's what he want with you. Amen. But right here, stuff. Okay. Right here, they say. But Saul, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwell in Damascus. Okay? They changed their mind yeah. about Paul based off of the way he turned his life around. So this evening I want to encourage everyone out there to look at yourself to make sure that you don't have a calling on your life. Make sure that you are not chosen. You see, many are calling feel chosen. And we need those that's chosen to be in position because the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. Y'all have a nice day. I love y'all. Come on now, give Jesus a hand. I say give Jesus a hand to sing this. Get on your feet. I say give Jesus a hand right now. Give the Lord a hand. Oh, for his glory and grace this evening.